straight to China nonstop. Unbelievable. But most of my life, I took commercial aircraft. And uh, after a while, I started chartering in the U.S., but going overseas was too expensive, so I didn't do that. I, so I found half my time I was on an airplane. About every four days, I was on an airplane or on stage, one of the two. Pretty intense life. So interesting enough, in those days, I go three times a year to Australia. I still do, but in those days, commercially, and I get on Qantas Airlines on a flight. You're in San Francisco or L.A. in those days, and it's a 14-hour flight, and there was just one problem. 31 companies in those days. It was like two dozen companies or, or 15 companies. I got all these people I'm responsible for. I'm a committed guy. And where, how am I connected 24-7, right? We all know what it is. It's all these tools that we develop, all this technology. But I was used to domestically, you got connection to the internet, even while you're flying. But you get on that 14-hour flight, <clears throat> death, no technology, no web. And I was like so frustrated. Why do they do this? These 14 hours, they can be so productive. Oh, my God. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Get a sense of what I'm talking about. So what happens? One day after years of going through this, before I had my own plane, I'm on, I'm on this flight, and Qantas Airlines announces we're about to take off. Guess what? We can now probably tell you we now have international internet. And it was like people cheered. Some people stood up in the aisles and clapped. I didn't, but I felt like doing it. It was just like, this is incredible. It's like God descended into the building. We have internet. We got Instagram. We got Facebook. We got email. This is the most amazing thing. And what do you think happened within 15 minutes? What do you think happened? Tell me. Come on. It broke down. And when do you think it worked again? Never. 14 hours without it. And people are like, this is bullshit. I can't believe this crap. I'm not putting up with it. 15 minutes earlier, it was a miracle. Now it's already an expectation. Write this down. If you want to change your life, trade your expectations for appreciation, and your whole life will change in that moment. Trade your expectations for appreciation, and your whole life will change in that moment. If you are suffering, there's only one reason. Things aren't meeting your expectations. What are the chances of everyone in your life meeting your expectations for the rest of your life? What are they? What are your expectations that God or the universe will meet your expectations every moment? See, I'd like you. Are you married, sir? Is she here? Oh, she's with your twins. How beautiful. Congratulations. I would never want to see you have any pain if I could ever avoid it, if I could do anything about it, but I'm not God. So I could do something different since I'm not God. I can get you to consider something that if you did it would give you freedom. It would be an absolute commitment in yourself to say, life is too short to suffer. God has given me this creation, and I'm going to love every moment. I'm going to find ecstasy every moment with my children, even when they do crazy shit, even when they're rugrats. I'm going to have to with my wife, even when she doesn't seem to be listening to me or my husband isn't. I'm going to do it even if she left me. I can't control her leaving you, but I can control one thing. You can make the decision that you are going to find beauty in everything in life and you're going to learn from everything in life. And that is the only way you'll be out of suffering. Otherwise, it won't matter how much money you make. It won't matter how many people love you. It doesn't matter how many great kids you have. Are there going to be disasters and challenges for all of us? Yes or no? Yes or no? All of us, I don't care how rich you are financially. I don't care how smart you are. I don't have you have an IQ of a genius. I don't care if you've got the biggest company in the world. Every person in the room is going to experience extreme stress in your future. Everyone here will have something, a robbery, a house that burns down, an earthquake, somebody that cheats you, somebody steals money from you, somebody you totally trusted and then they screw you over, somebody that betrays you. Aren't you glad you came to this positive seminar? <laughs> See, you thought it was Mr. Positive Thinking. You're so wrong. See, I'm a realist. I don't believe, I'm not stupid. I don't think that everybody, I know that most people are not fit and healthy. Most people around the world do not have a relationship where they're totally passionate. Most people do not love their work. True or false? But a few do. I'm interested in the few who do versus the many who talk. I'm interested in the few that live in beautiful states versus the masses that suffer. And I also know that anyone can end that suffering in a moment if you make the decision that says, I have decided from this day forward, I'm going to find beauty in everything by being in a beautiful state. And that means if you start to suffer, by the way, you're going to suffer. We all do. Because this brain is two million years old, and it's going to keep acting. It's going to keep looking what's wrong. But the difference is when it comes in, if you've made the decision, you'll start to suffer. And I created for myself a 90-second rule. I got 90 seconds. Get this shit out of me. 
And those 90 seconds, I figure out what it is, and I know how to stop suffering. I'm suffering because I'm having an expectation that's not being met. And while I think it's life and death, it's just my preference. It's my preference that you guys had more energy than we started. It's my preference that you'd have a great time. It's my preference that my kids would do everything I want them to do. It's my preference that all my employees across all these companies will do all the right things every day. God will laugh at your preferences. And what I found is I have my preferences, which are wonderful, but I'm still going to live in a beautiful state because life is precious. Hey, what if you were God? And you come down and you talk to one of your creations and you say, how's it doing down here? How's it going down here on earth? What do you think? And the person that you're talking to that you created goes, well, God, I mean, you could have done a better job. I mean, come on. Why'd you make it so freaking foggy here in San Francisco? I couldn't land my plane the other day. And why would you go planes that could cut through the fog? I mean, you're God. And why did you make all these irritating people? You know, I had so many irritating people. They try to stop me from doing things. And, you know, and, and, and also it's just like, why didn't you just make me rich? Why do I have to work? And besides that, you even got these little ants. You know those little red ants? They're like this small, and they bite the shit out of me. Why would you create those for me? If you heard all this bitching and you were God, would you want to hang out with this person? If you were God, you might, you know, say, I don't know. What if you go to somebody else, you go, what do you think? One of your other creations. And that person says, God, you're amazing. This is the most beautiful place on earth. This is heaven. This is extraordinary. I mean, there's so many different kinds of people, and they challenge me in so many different ways. I have to grow to understand them and understand myself. And, and, and you make the fog, and you make the sun, and it's always changing, so I'm never bored. And you make these little red ants. Damn, they're courageous. They'll, I'm 10,000 times their size. They'll bite my ass. That's pretty cool. Who would you want to spend time with? The first person or the second one if you were God? Which one? So if you're not experiencing God, perhaps you're bitching too much. Perhaps it's not God. Perhaps it's you and you're whining and you're suffering. So I want to finish with this. Yeah, give a hand for that if you want to. You have to know suffering. Jot it down if you want to stop suffering. First, you got to know how you suffer and recognize and be honest. Second, you can't tolerate. We all get what we tolerate. So you have to make the decision. I'm going to be in a beautiful state the rest of my life. It doesn't have to be happy. It could be determined. It could be curious. It could be committed. It could be energized. It could be grateful. It could be loving. It could be happy. It could be any of these. But I am going to be that every day because I'm capable. And I've shown you earlier you are because how fast can you change your state, my friends? How fast? Come on, guys. How fast? If you stop using your mind and you use your body and your heart, your spirit, that's what will put you there. The mind won't keep you there. It might get you there for when things go your way, your mind will feel happy. But what happens when they don't? I was talking to a man the other day, and he was telling me all about his company, and he lost the company, built it up, and it was a billion-dollar company. And then, you know, the venture capitalist guys voted him out of his own company. I said, welcome to Steve Jobs' world. And then he told me this new company he's creating, but he doesn't want to put it in, so he's afraid of getting hurt again. I said, you lost that company for a reason. Perhaps it's so you can build this company, which is going to save people's health. What if you and I, we stop the suffering by having one new belief. Here's what I believe in my soul. Life is always happening for us, never to us. We think it's happening to us because of our minds, but it's all happening for us, even the pain, even the disappointment, even the problems. If my mother had been the mother I'd wanted, I would not be here today. I would not be. If my father had not left, I would not feed a billion people, much less 100 million, much less 1,000. Maybe life isn't always about getting your preferences. Maybe life is about you becoming more. And when you do, you feel more alive and you have more to give. And that's the purpose of life. Because when we're giving, we're outside of ourselves. There's no suffering when we're giving. In fact, when you're most happy and excited about something, what's the first thing you want to do? How many of you, the minute something great happens, you want to share it with somebody you love? Raise your hand if that's what you want to do. Say, I. Why? Because when you share it, there's only so much you can feel inside. Even if you had sex or rock and roll, love, drugs, whatever you think is going to make float your boat, money. You only feel so much. But when you share it, it multiplies. So here's the antidote suffering. Identify your favorite flavor. Make the decision that says, I will not suffer. I'm going to live in a beautiful state no matter no matter what if it rains on your parade? What if your best friend screws you over? What if somebody yells at you? What if you get humiliated? What if you go broke? What if you lose your job? Could you still be happy, yes or no? 
Other people have lost arms, legs, been blinded, lost their family, and they're still loving and happy and beautiful, yes or no? And they aren't just Mother Teresa. They're not just Nelson Mandela. They're any human being that decides to live where it's not about themselves. Sisters, I love you so much. You, well, the reason I want to support you, the reason we made those prayers that I decided I was going to fulfill those for you is because you don't just feed people. You love people, people that no one else, people have forgotten. And you're there every day and you ask for nothing. And I know that's why you're fulfilled. And I honor you both. I love you. Give them a hand. So I came to give you an invitation to come back home to yourself to what you're made for. And it's beautiful that you do it in business. Can you live a spiritual life in the middle of your business? All it takes is live in a beautiful state. And when you see people that seem like assholes, they're suffering. Have compassion. And bring your beautiful state to them instead of your judgment. Because you can never influence somebody when you're judging them. But if you can give them love when they're not loving themselves, there's a possibility of the suffering ending. But no one can do it for them, not even me and not even you. We can end our suffering when we take 100% responsibility for our experience of life. Not what happens, our experience of life. We can't control what's going to happen. There's going to be earthquakes, there's going to be deaths, there's going to be people we love that leave. You're going to get sick, there are going to be problems. But you can still have the most magnificent life. But it requires coming back in here, not just here. And it's hard when you're as smart as all of you are, and I'm not blowing smoke. You couldn't be here unless you're the cream of the crop in terms of your intelligence. I'm fairly smart too. But you're smart, and then there's wisdom. Wisdom is found in your spirit and your soul. Wisdom is when you connect to what matters most. What have you suffered over? Who have you suffered over? And is it a time to end that suffering? If you do, there's a level of freedom and joy and love that I can promise you is more than any you've ever experienced. And I'm trying to tell you, some of you, some of you know what I'm talking about because you've experienced it. But I'm talking about every day, every moment. And I'm not saying I never suffer. I'm saying when I suffer, I end it. The best way to end suffering is kill the monster while it's little. Don't wait till it's Godzilla eating your whole city in life. If you turn yourself and train yourself to do it. And by the way, I did this a year and a half ago. And to give you an idea, what happened was I felt the most joy I've ever felt in my life. And then I had three incidences. And you understand how I entered the room. I've been on stage for 39 years working with 50 million people. I give my all every day. This is easy. This is three hours. My average seminar is 50 hours. My stress here is three hours. Because I don't like to talk. I like to go deep, as you might gather. And I like to condition it where we get up and do things. There's only so much time. And those 50 hours, I go full tilt. And I've been doing that for 39 years. And I clap like a crazy man. I jump much more intensely in here because I'm toning it down for you guys because you think I'm crazy when I first come in, especially where you guys started with your energy. I look like a maniac. But what I found in that time is doing that, hammering like that, it damaged the nerves in my arms. And so all of a sudden, I couldn't sleep on my side, which I've done my whole life. No big deal. I'll sleep on my back. It's painful. Who cares? I manage pain. Every great athlete does that. Every good person does that. But then my wife is freaking out saying, honey, you're, you're choking. You're not breathing. And I was exhausted. And I went in and did a sleep study and found I had sleep apnea. But it was extreme. In 17 minutes, I stopped breathing 18 times. That doesn't make for very much rest. That doesn't make for health. So now I have this really sexy device. It's called a sleep app. You stick it on your face. It's a mask and it pours oxygen and you will get girls with this shit, I promise you. But they'll be in the hospital, the girls that you'll get, right? And so I'm like, I can't believe this. I'm, I'm breathing through this breather now because of these nerves. And then I'm going, I'm kind of crazy. I'm snowboarding and I rip three rotator cuffs. Not a problem. It's painful. I'll get it worked, but then the pain won't go away, and the pain becomes nerve pain that's shooting so bad. I know how to deal with pain, but on a 0 to 10, 9.9. And it's so severe, I can't sleep. I'm in so much pain, and I don't want to do surgery. And the surgeon says, well, it's in your spine. He comes in and tells me it's not just your rotator cuffs. You have something called spinal stenosis where it's tightening around your spine and crushing the nerves, and there really isn't a solution. We can do surgery, but it's no guarantee, and there's side effects. 
And the guy, by the way, first tells me, oh, I've been to your business mastery program. I'm, I'm making a million, two more a year. And I went to this other place. He's telling me, you've changed my life. And he goes, no, I got to tell you, I'm your doctor. I'm going to show you something. Your life is over. That was his bedside manner. I had not trained him, obviously, in these communication tools. And he told me, I can't snowboard. I can't play racquetball, squash. I can't, you know, I can't jump around. I can't do this stuff. But I don't accept that. I was told I had a tumor in my brain when I was 32. It's still there. And I'm fine. I didn't treat it. I'm fine. It gave me massive growth. I was 5'1 in high school. I'm 6'7. I tell people the difference is personal growth. <laughs> I had growth hormone that exploded me up. I still have a tumor to grow, so I didn't accept this diagnosis. I didn't say it wasn't there. I just said I won't accept that there's nothing to be done. In the world we're in today, you can find answers. And so I, I pushed, and I know some of the best doctors around the world. And I found a doctor in Australia who said to me, Tony, we can do this. You sent me MRIs of people with similar situations, and the way they solve it is with 100 hours of hyperbaric oxygen, where you go inside a coffin, and they make it so pressured, about 65, pounds, or 65 feet below the ocean pressure, and they fill you with oxygen, and it releases 800% more stem cells, and it starts to heal. And he says to me, though, before you come all the way to Australia, which is where he is, go do these blood tests so I can see what's happening to your blood, how much inflammation you have, what's going on. And I said, okay. And I went and did it. And when I was there, the guy who was doing the blood said, you want to do a metals test? I said, you mean like mercury? I said, oh, I had my amalgams out 25 years ago. He goes, well, we do lead and we do aluminum. I said, all right, let's do it. And then the doctor calls me two weeks later every single day. And I'm busy. So I said, send me the report. He goes, I must speak to you on message. So I call him up and he said, you should be in the hospital right now. I said, what? He said, you have the highest level of mercury we've ever measured here in the United States. We measure on a zero to five scale. If you're three or above, your body's so toxic, you can die. You can have a heart attack. You can have a stroke. You are 123. He said, the highest I've ever measured is 76. I said, that's impossible. How could that be? He said, we can tell by the type of mercury it's fish. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm so intense in my life that I've made my diet really simple. It's salad, veggies, and fish. And the two fish that I always had, and I'm, I'm telling you this, is swordfish, which I love, and tuna. They are 75-year-old living fish, and they eat all the smaller fish, and they have a 1,000 times more mercury today, but no one tells you this because the fishing industry would be ended if you knew it. So, and two other doctors looked at it, and one of the other doctors said, how long has he been in the hospital? I just got off stage in a 50-hour seminar, 5-0-0, over four days. And I was like, no wonder I'm exhausted because it destroys your mitochondria, which creates ATP, which creates energy. I'm thinking, I'm just exhausted because I'm working so hard. And then I was also losing my memory. And then I've always sweat, but sweat like I did when I first ran on stage here. Because if I start running, all of a sudden my body has to work so hard, it just, it's pushing to keep going. I would be dead today if I had not torn my rotator cuffs, if I had not hurt my spine, if I had not been in a position where I hurt my arms so bad I can't sleep on my side and had to put a sleep app on. Life is always happening for us, not to us, even when it doesn't look that way. It's our job to find the benefit. And I'm telling you this now for another reason, which is please go get your metals test because the world we're in today is so toxic that all, out of 12 of my friends that I told this in the first few weeks, six of them all had poisoning. And they thought they were just exhausted or tired or frustrated. Lots of people get diagnosed with dementia. I find myself on stage. It's happened once or twice a year. I hope you didn't notice. But I can tell you now where I thought, where the hell am I? And I've never had that in my life. I do 50 hours without missing a beat. And it's changing. I don't have a script. I'm looking at you. I'm feeling. I'm responding. But I go like, why am I telling this story? But all that will come back when it's gone. I'm down to 18 from 123. It's taken me nine months to do it. I'm not there yet, but I'm almost there. Thank you very much. Right? I don't care. I'm a single bee. I found myself in my melodies. I sing with love. So if you're watching somewhere else in the world, you're here, go get a metals test. And if you do and you you got this in your body, get it out. There's a man named Dr. Shane. He's one of the best metals guys in the world. You can find him on the web. He's made a giant difference for me. And I'm going to get those things back. But I wouldn't have got them back unless all these horrible things have happened. I just give it to you as a metaphor for what you think is your worst day could be your best day. But it requires some faith. Faith that there's a higher purpose and everything happens in our lives and making ourselves look for it. So I want to finish by showing you how to end suffering in two minutes. There are many ways. I don't have any more time. I'm out of time. You've been so gracious. I hope this has been touching for you. I hope it's made you think. Who here has decided in your gut suffering ends here tonight? I'm curious. Not all of you are going to do it. But who really is going to do this? Say I. 
then I want to ask you to do two things. I want you to ask you to send me a note. And you can send the note to, and what, uh, I'll have my team put it up there. It's an email. They'll throw it up there. I don't know what the name of it is, quite honestly. I would love to hear your commitment and why. And then I'd love to have you copy that to two people you respect, two people you love. Because if you do that, they're going to know why you're going to do this, why you want to live this beautiful state every day, why you'll do it no matter what, even if it doesn't. That ends suffering now at TonyRobbins.com. And I would love to hear your story of what you're going to do. That's why I came by here. I'll be inspired by it. But more importantly, you'll be making a commitment. I'm nobody. But if you commit by telling me and a couple other people that matter, you might also inspire them to consider the possibility. I wish I could go deeper on the subject, but what I want to give you is a tool. Because if you make the decision, then you're going to come up with suffering. How do you end it? By the way, when I say 90-second rule, in the beginning, it should have been a four-hour rule. Maybe a few years ago, it should have been a four-week rule. Like, but now, once I've done it over and over again, just like getting in state, it becomes a habit. And now you can do it so easily. And the freedom you'll feel will be amazing. But let's finish by showing you how to do it. And I'll do it with a real experience for you. Stand up. Shake your body out. Before we do anything else, let's crank the energy so we're high level to do this. I want you to face the party and go, I own you. No, I own you. I want you to outdo their energy for 20 seconds. And I want you on a zero to 10 to go to level 20. So 10 feels like it would be relaxing. Let's clap and then we'll jump. Ready? One. Two. Three, go! Before we leave, let me make two announcements, and after this, we'll go. We'll do our end suffering. If you'd like to help someone else end suffering, join me. Spend 10 bucks. Let me double it. Or 100, let me double it. Whatever good you do, I'll double. Up to 5 million. Feeding America, go to feedingamerica.com. You can do it. Or, how many found tonight to be profound you'd like to continue this kind of feeling? Say, I. If you want to get something that will support you long term, I have a, a digital product, it's called the Ultimate Edge. You probably saw it years ago, it's been updated. It's $300, if you want to get it, it's $200. If you do it now, but I'll do it here, 100% of the profits to another organization I'd love to make a difference with. And it's an organization that frees people that are trafficked. It's specifically the young boys and young girls that are in sexual slavery. And the organization is called Underground Railroad. They're extraordinary. I'll give every penny that you invest in yourself, those $200, do do it. It'll take about 18 of you to free one child. What would it be like? I've freed 200 in the last two weeks. I'd love to free another 100 in partnership with you while you change your life. So if you want to do that, you can go to, show them the text where they can go, flip it up there real fast, and take a picture. That would be a good time. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> there it is. So if you text Dreamforce, the ultimate edge, at 44222, um, you'll receive it if you do it within the next 48 hours. I'll donate 100 percent of it. You'll get to the benefit of changing your life. And the last thing is, if you'd like to come to a real seminar instead of three hours and an environment where where everybody is primed for this kind of experience, I'm coming here to San Francisco, coming up here in November 10th to the 12th. And if you also text or go to my organization there, they'll give you 100 dollars off if you want to go. I'm going to feed a million people in San Francisco, by the way, that week here in November. That's going to be my gift out of that event as well. So it's something we can all do together. If you'd like, just reach out and do it. Those are ways you can continue the journey if you want to. I've given you a book. I hope it's helpful for you on the financial side. If you want a second opinion, go to secondopinion.com. That's it. Let me now do the final piece. Shake your body out. Here's what I want you to do. Think of a place where you have suffered. Frustration, overall, anger, sadness, feeling not enough something. And what if there was a quick way to end it? Here's how that can be done in a matter of moments. First, you only suffer because of what you focus on. And you're focusing on one of three things. Three words you want to remember going forward. Loss, 
less or never. If you're suffering, it's because your brain believes because you did something to me or the government did or the company did or the other employee did or I did something or because you didn't do something or I didn't do something, I have lost something. Lost love, lost time, lost energy, lost respect, lost significance, lost anything. The illusion of loss makes us suffer. All you've lost was your expectations weren't met. Because there's no guarantee in life. Could we walk across the street and get by a car? Of course we can. That's loss. Everything else is an illusion. It just means your preferences weren't met. The second thing will make you suffer is if you think something you did or didn't do, or something someone else did or didn't do, cause you have less of something you value, less love, less joy, less time, less energy, less acknowledgement. If you feel like you have less, you will suffer. And then third one and the worst one is, if your brain starts believing that you failed to do something, I failed to do something, or you did something, or I did something, it means I will never have that love, have that joy, have that success, have that acknowledgement, have that freedom. When our brain believes or we have less or we'll never, we suffer. And all those are illusions. The way you get out of it is really simple. You're never going to go from suffering to joy. It's too big a jump. So you go from suffering to appreciating something. How many of you, no matter how bad your life is, there's something you can appreciate? Your health, your children, your life, the country you live in. How many got something you can appreciate? Say, I. Is there something you can appreciate in every moment, even in the worst moment you've been in? Yes or no? Yes or no? And if you're so smart, which I know you are, you should be easily find those things. All it is is you decide, I'm not going to suffer. So when I feel it, within 90 seconds, I figure out what it is. I don't live there. I find something to appreciate. I find something next to enjoy. Second step, once you appreciate and enjoy, I want to learn from this. What can I learn? What can I grow? If in the middle of that problem you learn from that relationship, then it's not a bad ending of relationship anymore. If you grow from it, you're going to feel alive. And thirdly, third step, after appreciate and enjoy, learn and grow, throw it up. If you do anything loving, if you give anything, if you're grateful, your suffering will end. Are there people that have been concentration camps that were able to end suffering even though there was physical pain? Yes or no? What I learned through all this pain in my body was there's pain and there's suffering. You want to know the difference? Pain is that shock feeling of pressure and tension running up my spine. Suffering is, why did this happen to me? Will I ever be able to do this again? Can I ever get back on stage? What am I, we, how long will this, will, this, will this last? The story is the suffering. It's easy to deal with pain. It's the suffering that makes it so hard. Raise your hand if you follow what I'm talking about here. Say, I. So I'm going to give you one technique right now. We'll do it really fast so you know it works. Shake your body up. In fact, right now, develop a quick pattern. I want you to make a move that if you made that move, you feel strong instantly. Just try something. Make a strong move of some sort. Make a move. Make a move. Make a move. Make a sound when you just shout the word yes when you make your move. Make your move. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Now here's what I want you to do. How many of you have a situation either at home or in your work environment where there's some unfinished business, where there's a situation with a person or a situation that you need to handle, and it's stressful inside when you think about it, so you try not to think about it, you do other stuff. But it's got to be handled, and you've not handled it. How many got an area where there's some suffering like that? Raise your hand nice and high. Let me see. Virtually everybody. Good. Think of that situation that really bugs you, and really think about how it really feels if you really let yourself focus on it and feel what that suffering would be like. And I want you to pick something that on a scale from zero to 10, where 10 is total suffer and zero is no suffering at all, that's in the eight or above range at least, seven, eight, nine, 10. Don't pick a little one because you won't notice in this quick moment enough for you to feel. I want you to feel the difference. How many got something that needs to be handled, you've not resolved it, you're either pissed off or you feel hurt or you feel worried, or you're concerned, and you've not handled it, and you put it off, and it needs to be handled. Raise your hand if you got, and the pain of it is that if you focus on it, is seven, eight, nine, or 10. Let me see your show hands. Awesome. Here's what I want to show you. A group of scientists discovered something about 20 years ago that's amazing. If I measure your brain waves and your heart waves, your EEG and your EKG, you've probably seen them on, you know, on medical pieces. They look very jagged when you're stressed. They don't look anything alike. Your brain waves and your heart waves. But if all you do is put both your hands on your heart, try it now, and you physically feel your heart. See the example I'm giving you? So this is frustration. You can see they look nothing like each other. 
But if you put your hands on your heart and you physically feel your heart, like breathe in your heart just for a moment. We're going to do this for two minutes. That's all. We're going to be done. Breathe in your heart deeply right now. Feel the power of your heart. Feel the strength of your heart. Feel the beauty of your heart. And as you breathe deeply in your heart, feel grateful for the power of your heart. What are you grateful your heart has guided you to do or to give or to be? What has your heart allowed you to love, feel, share? Feel it now. And actually touch your heart. Think about its power. It beats 100,000 times a day without you ever telling it to, even when you sleep. In fact, you didn't have to earn this heart. It was given to you. You were enough to be given this. And as long as it beats, you live. It's grace inside you. Feel grateful for this heart that's beat, even though you have not paid attention to it. And as you breathe in your heart, for two minutes, what will happen is your brain waves and heart waves will line up and in that beautiful state we can solve your problem. All you need to do right now for two minutes, breathe in your heart and think of three things, one at a time I'll guide you, that you're grateful for. Think of a moment in your life you could feel deeply grateful for right now. Think of a specific moment. If you can think of one that you really treasure, you feel grateful for, say the word yes with strength. Go. Say it again. One more time, please. Awesome. Breathe in your heart. Close your eyes if you want or leave them open. But go into that moment as if you were actually there. A moment you're so grateful happened. A magnificent moment. A sacred moment. A moment of love or of joy or of insight. A moment you feel so grateful for. And just fill up with gratitude right now. Like you're there, seeing and feeling as if you're there. Thank you, good man. Breathe it, feel it, enjoy it. Feel so grateful. When you're grateful, you can't be angry and grateful simultaneously. Anger destroys most of our life. Fear destroys the other. You can't be grateful and fearful simultaneously. So fill up with gratitude. Think of a second moment now second moment you could feel so grateful for. Step in as if you're there. See what you saw then. Feel what you felt then. Fill up with it. Think of a third moment now you could feel so grateful for if you wanted to. What's a magnificent moment, a magic moment in your life? A moment of grace. And think of a moment now. Can you think of a moment where a coincidence happened that you're grateful for? A coincidence. We all love coincidences because we didn't do anything. Life happened for us. You went someplace to a party or to go shopping or go to school or, then, or go to work. And then grace happens. And that's someone that you'll love as long as you live. Someone you live for, somebody you die for. And the feeling was mutual. And you did nothing. It was grace. Fill up that gratitude. And now while you're in this state, right now you're in a beautiful state, aren't you? Breathe it. Feel your heart. Feel so filled gratitude. This is not expectation. This is appreciation. This is what we're made for, to appreciate. What greater gift could you give your creator than your appreciation? 
while you're in this state, think of what was stressful that you have not handled, but stay in your heart, not your head. Keep breathing. Feel your heart. And while you're breathing in your heart, ask yourself this question about what was stressing you. All I need to remember is, all I need to really do is what? In your heart, the answer is there. Breathe in your heart and ask yourself, in that situation I've been putting off, all I need to remember is, all I need to focus on is, all I need to do is what? And your heart knows. Raise your hand if you know the answer to what needs to be done right now. Raise your hand nice and high and put it up and keep it up if you know the answer to one thing you've been putting off that was suffering Look around the room. About 99% of you, some of you are suffering because you're too tired to raise your hand, I understand. This is only one technique. But look, the answer you've been waiting for is always in you. It's in your heart. I didn't come by to teach you. Learning is remembering, said Socrates. I came by to remind you of what you know. It's been a privilege to serve you here, those of you on the web. I hope our paths will cross again sometime soon. God bless. I love you all. Tonight, only I.